I've been hurting this past week with myself. It's the third year anniversary of being my mom. I was trying real hard to feel sorry for myself, but then I kind of had to remember she's in a much better place than me. But nonetheless, it's always your mother that you, you know, that'll that'll make you bring you to your knees if, if you don't have one. This is an old school song. I always play it. It always brings me comfort. So maybe I can put it up here. Um. I've been held by 
say I appreciate all of you that uh, helped on Sunday and made everything happen. We certainly appreciate uh, that and uh, I always enjoy uh, getting to go other places but uh, ain't no place like home. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Y'all make preaching easy for me. And I appreciate that from you. I don't know if it's that you love me or you just don't know no better. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's uh, find uh, Revelation there again. And let's look at verse number 20, or chapter 20 rather, and uh, verse number 11. And we'll see what the Lord has for us here tonight. Uh, just these last few verses and... Uh, those of you that um, wanted the verses that I had uh, made mention of last week, if you'll hold on right after the service, that piece of paper that I had, I put it somewhere, but I have it saved on my computer, so if you give me a few minutes to print it for you, uh, you can have that before you leave. Uh, Revelation 20 and verse number 11, the Bible says there, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open and another book was open, which is the book of life. 
And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, what sobering truth verses that we have here tonight. And Lord, I pray for the next little while that God, you would help us to handle them uh, Lord, with honor, handle the oh Lord as you would have us to. And God, may you speak to us through your word. Lord, have your will and have your way. We thank you, God, for all that you've done. And we thank you, Lord, for how you're, you're helping us. And God, you will help us. God, for all these that stand in need tonight, I pray that God, you would help each and every one of them. Have your will in this place. Speak to us. May we leave differently than we came. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Tonight, we are looking at the great white throne judgment. Uh, just a chapter or two uh, prior, uh, we had looked at the judgment seat of Christ. And as just a reminder, the judgment seat of Christ is for the believer. The great white throne judgment is for the unbeliever, the lost. The very fact that you're saved means you will not have to stand at the great white throne judgment. Your sins have already been judged some 2,000 years ago. Jesus put all your sins on the cross and I will never have to answer for those at the great white throne judgment because Jesus took my penalty. Uh, when we study the book of Revelation, it's a bookend to time. What began in Genesis ends in Revelation. In Genesis chapter number 3, when Adam and Eve uh, sinned against God, the question was asked, as God was wont to walk with Adam in the cool of the day, when God, Adam heard God coming, he knew he had done wrong, he knew he was naked, and he hid himself. And God asked the question, where art thou? Man, from that day to this day, all the way to judgment there, will try to hide from the wrath and the all-seeing eye of God. But may I remind us here today that you, and I, no one, will be able to hide from God. There'll be no hiding place from God. Adam, where art thou? We, we find that society and men, women, boys, and girls hide from God in pleasure. The Bible said there's pleasure in sin for a season. They hide from God and even in academics. They think if they can learn enough, they can learn that there's, uh, that there's no God and they're, they're, they can learn better than that. They learn even, or they hide even in theology. They get their ideas on, on uh, how all this could have happened and uh, how God could have done it better. 
They have ideas, they have philosophy. It goes on and on and on to the things that people will hide from God in. But on that day, there'll be no more hiding. When the, we, when th these people, and if you're in this place and do not know Christ, you'll stand before God all by yourself. There'll be no advocate on your behalf. When we stand before God right now, as a saved child of God, I have an advocate. I've got a lawyer. I've got someone who pleads my case. And the blood pleads my case. And when God looks at me, he can't see what I've done because I'm covered. Hallelujah. I'm covered by the blood. Bless his name. Uh, as we begin to look into these verses, I want to call your attention to verse number 11, where we find that there's a judge that is seated. Verse 11 said, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no, or was found, no place for them. Notice the Bible tells us about this throne and this judge that is seated on the throne. In the picture of the throne, the throne is, is called a great white throne. That speaks of its power. There is no more appeal to a higher court. If you and I were to be accused of a crime, we would go to our local court. We would go to another court if we were to appeal it. We could appeal it all the way to the Supreme Court in the United States. Uh, beyond that, there is no appeal. Here in God's judicial system, they are at the final court. There is nothing higher than this court. Uh, so we sp this speaks of the power uh, of this court. Notice the Bible said that it is not only called uh, a great throne, but it's called the great white throne. It speaks of its power. It speaks of its purity. Uh, his judgment is perfect. Uh, his judgment is righteous. This judge is infallible. He's never got a case wrong. He's always fair, and he'll always do what's right. In fact, after this judgment, Every sinner that stands before God uh, will be sentenced and will know that they received a perfect, fair judgment. I'll never forget, I was uh, years ago, uh, someone in the church uh, had a family member of sorts who had passed away, and I was uh, asked to be part of a funeral. And it was over in Charlotte somewhere. Uh, a little old preacher uh, was doing the funeral with me. And Dr. Brown always taught us to defer to the other preacher and the other pastor. Let them uh, do uh, take lead if need be. And so I did just exactly that. And he told me, it was interesting, I'd never had this concept before. He said, I'm going to preach out of the Old Testament, and I want you to preach out of the New Testament. And I was like, all right, there's plenty to preach all through the Bible. And uh, he stood up, and the, the lady who had passed had slipped into some uh, addiction-type issues. And she, at one time, there was part of his church and lay in a hospital and I went and visited her and I remember they sang songs there in that little room. And uh, I don't know uh, where her eternal soul is tonight. He knew her and knew her a lot better than I did. But he preached and uh, brought a verse that I want to share with you tonight out of Genesis chapter 18. I didn't uh, write the reference so you'll just have to skim down through there. The story is that God is about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham is pleading on behalf of that town 
because Lot had went down to Sodom. I mean, just pause right here. The reason that Lot went to Sodom is because he spent some time with Uncle Abraham. And Uncle Abraham took him to Egypt. And he saw the well-watered plains in Egypt. And the Bible said whenever there become a strife between Abraham's men and Lot's men, he said, pick which way you want to go. Whichever way you go, I'll go the other way. And the Bible said that Lot lifted up his eyes and saw the well-watered plain that was like Egypt. And no doubt Abraham had a little bit of uh, concern that he had sowed into what his nephew has now found himself in. So he's pleading before God. And he said, if there's, I forget the number, if there's a hundred righteous, if there's 50 righteous, he gets all the way down to 10. God, if there's just 10 righteous in that city, don't destroy it. God said, there's not. Judgment's going to fall. And in that portion of scripture, he says this. He said, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? We can trust that God, the judge of all the earth, will do right. His judgment will be righteous. His judgment will be perfect. His judgment will be uh, infallible. Every sinner that stands at the great white throne will know that they got exactly what was coming to them. They got exactly what was fair by them. Now notice when we talk about the, this throne and the picture of the throne, uh, the Bible uh, goes on to say, and said, and him that sat on the throne. Who sat on the throne? I, I'm inclined in my natural thought to think, well, that's God that sat on the throne. Well, in a way, it's God the Son. Turn to John 5 and verse number 22. I'll have to turn with you. I don't have this uh, ready for you. John 5 and verse number 22. The Bible says this. For the Father judges no man but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. In fact, there in uh, Hebrews it said uh, that God the Father said to the Son, Thy throne, O God, is forever. John, that was John 5 and 22. So we know that it's Jesus Christ that is seated at the great white throne. Now we know him as the savior. We know him as the lowly Nazarene. But here he is no longer a poor, humble carpenter. He is the conqueror. He's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. And he is seated on the throne. His presence is so terrible and so powerful that even the heavens and the earth will flee from him. I look what the Bible said there and said, and him that sat on the throne from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And so we can see there that God has given this judgment to the son and the son is now seated where he was at one time on the right hand of God pleading for you and I. He was on the right hand of God being our advocate. Now he has assumed the place of judge on the throne where at one time he was our savior. Now he is our judge. The perception of the throne is this. There's no place that you can hide from the all-seeing eye of God. To, there's no place to hide in heaven and in earth. 
out of the gaze of the one that's on the throne, the judge sees it all. I don't have time to go into all the verses, but there's many verses in the Bible that teach us that there's no hiding from God. There's no place. David said, behold, if I make my bed in hell, thou art there. There's nowhere you can go that you can get away from him. He sees everything that goes on in your life. You can be assured that if you're not saved tonight, that you will stand at this judgment and all of those sins, all of those deeds, all of those works will be brought up before you're cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. So we see there is a judge that is seated and then we see in verse number 12, there's justice that is served. Verse number 12 uh, says there, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. The defendants that stand before the throne, the Bible said that they were dead. And how do I know that these are not people who uh, have been saved that have to go to the white, great white throne as well? Because we have passed, John 5 and verse 24, we have passed from death unto life. Ephesians 2 said that those that are without Christ are spiritually dead. Uh, this will be made up completely of those uh, who are lost, of the king, the pauper, the general, the foot soldier, the master, the slave, the borrower, and the lender will all stand uh, before God. Preachers, deacons, uh, church members, popes, priests, uh, choir members, drunks, uh, drug addicts, pimps, pushers, grandmas and grandpas, teenagers, moms and dads, boys and girls will all stand before a thrice holy God. Even those that are in hell will be brought to the great white throne. I've often thought about that, Wilbur. If a person died right now and did not know Christ, the Bible said, for those that are saved, uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But those that were to die right now as far as we can tell, they'll go to the place called hell. Uh, just like the story there with Lazarus, the rich man, they'll go to that place called hell. And if you were there and all of a sudden everything stopped and you were brought in this great light, maybe you would believe that what they taught you was true. Your sins have been burned off. Your sins have been atoned for. Your sins have been dealt with. But no, they go and stand before God, God's Son, and they are cast into the eternal lake of fire to burn forever and ever and ever. Justice will be served. The defendants on the, there. But notice what, what is used to judge. Um, nowadays, we live in a society that calls wrong right and right wrong. And they'll judge you according to whatever the flavor of the month is. Uh, what now it's called DEI, and they have all these other uh, acronyms and all these other, other things that they want to judge us by. But the truth is, there's only one thing that I will stand in, judge, uh, in judgment by, and that is the Word of God. We will stand before God all by ourselves, and it will not be up to a politician. It will not be up to whoever come up with the latest craze and the latest fad of what we ought to be doing, what we ought not say, and what we ought not do. None of that will matter. We'll stand before God, and the books will be open. Now, what books uh, may be there? Let's look and see what the Bible says. Uh, we know that the Bible will be judged by the Bible. Look in uh, uh, verse number, let's read verse number 12 uh, again. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, 
which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. So let's see what the books may be according to Scripture. John chapter number 12 and verse number 48. You'll have to uh, help me here just a moment. John 12 and verse 48. Let's see what the Bible says. John 12 and verse number 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken and the same shall judge him in the last day. That's John 12 and verse number 48. It would do us well to learn this book. Don't tell me what Papa told you it said. Don't tell me what you heard that might have meant. You need to learn what this Bible says because you're going to be judged according to the word. You're not going to be a judge according to what the preacher preached. You're going to be judged according to what the word said. So it would do us all well to go ahead and learn the word of God. You say, well, preacher, I'm not, I'm not that kind of person. It's funny that we can learn the things we want to learn. Amen. <laughs> Help me right there. I mean, we can learn statistics, and we can learn this record and that record, and we can tell you how to bore this out, and we can tell you all that kind of stuff. If we can learn that, we ought to be able to learn this. Amen. Amen. I'm preaching to me too. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, the Bible will be cut and judged according to the Bible. What documents will be used? What books will be open? The Bible. The book of deeds, verse number 12, or the book of works, and the, uh, verse number 12 said there, uh, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. So God is keeping a record of what you do. God's keeping a record of what I do. And we've already talked about it by now. We've already been through the judgment seat of Christ. Our works have been tried by fire, and some of us have wood, hay, and stubble. Some of us have some precious stones and some wonderful things to lay at the feet of our Savior. But here's the book of works uh, that they are judged out of, or the book of deeds. Then uh, this one, I'll, I'll read you some verses and see what you, uh, what you have to say about it. I call it the book of life. The book of life. Look at uh, Revelation chapter 3. There's three verses here in uh, the book of Revelation I want you to look at. You can jot these down if you want to or just uh, flip to them. Revelation chapter number 3 and verse number 5. Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 5. Uh, the Bible says there, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name, out of the book of life and I will confess his name before my father and before his angels now look at Revelation 17 and verse number 8 Revelation 17 and verse number 8 the Bible said and the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And so there's another mention there. Look at Revelation 22 and verse number 19. This is one that we'll get to a little bit later. Um, I I make no apology, and I am not. I am dogmatic about this. I believe that I hold in my hand God's perfect word. I believe that it has been preserved in the English language in the King James Bible. I believe that. I'm not going to be ugly to somebody if they have something else, but I believe that this is without error. I believe this is the perfect word of God. I don't believe in monkeying around with God's book. 
Verse number 19 said this. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book. By the way, that's the third warning that's given in the scripture. I believe it's the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Psalms or Proverbs 1. And here in the book of Revelation, we'll talk about that when we get this verse later on. Uh, but it talks about taking his name and his place out of the book of life. And so I believe that uh, just as long as there, that name was there, there was hope. But then the Bible said in Revelation 17, we just read it, that there were those that saw the beast whose name was not written. There was no hope for them. God, their, their fate was sealed. Here we find these, their fate is sealed. Just as this judgment will be final, so their place there is final as well. Look uh, with me in Revelation 13 and verse number 8. Revelation 13 and verse number 8. The Bible said, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life, or excuse me, in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world, the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 21 and verse number 27. Revelation 21, verse 27, there shall in no wise enter in, into uh, it, it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Every person that stands before a thrice holy God and stands at the great white throne judgment this day will have no part and no place in the Lamb's book of life. Their name has not been written. You know, I, I don't have time to go into this right now, but as Revelation 2 or Revelation 3, I think it's chapter 2, it talks about that new name, that we are given a new name. Uh, some people ask me this. They, they say, Preacher, uh, how am I going to know or will we know our loved ones when we get to heaven? In 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about we see through a glass darkly now, but we will know then as we're known. And I don't know exactly what your loved one's going to look like. I can tell you this, they won't look like the last time you saw them up in a coffin, embalmed. They won't look like that. They won't look like they looked on the deathbed in the hospital, raped, racked with pain, and had just skin and bones. They won't look like that. Some people believe they'll be about 33 years old. Uh, I used to think, well, is that really the height of, uh, of who we are? And on the, on, the, on the other side of 33, I can think, man, 33 was pretty good. I'd like to get back to 33. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'd like to get back to 33 in the pants. Head man goes right there. <laughs> that was, I'm talking about that was graduating. I, I graduated high school wearing that right there. <laughs> How much I did? I ain't none of your business. Don't you be me looking trying to think. Unless you will buy me a suit, we can talk, all right? <laughs> um, where was I going? We were talking uh, judged according to those uh, things that were written in the book. Now notice uh, here what the Bible says that it talks about the Lamb's book of life. It talks about how that we are judged according to that. And people ask at times, how will we know and how, what will we be like? I can't answer all those questions, but I know this. I know the Bible said we shall be like him. Uh, that's 1 John 3 and verse number 2. We shall all be changed. We shall be like him. 
One of these days we're going to be changed from this old veil of flesh. One of these days that loved one that you watched and that loved one you said goodbye to at a cold, chilly graveside, that loved one uh, that you were standing there in the heat of the day uh, and you tried to be strong uh, and, 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 and the last time you saw them, your heart was broken. I'm glad one of these days, uh, those days will change. Uh, those things will change. Uh, I'm thankful for the child of God. Uh, there is a brighter day a coming. Uh, there is a great day a coming. Uh, uh, there's a day uh, that our sins uh, and our failures uh, will all be left behind uh, and will be changed and will be like him. Amen. Amen. Now, look with me. I'll try to hurry through these last year. Look in verse number 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Judgment will be settled on this day. There is a fearful judgment. The Bible said this is the second death. There will be no end to the torment. There will be no end to the hell to the awful nature of what the sinner will face, it will be an eternal state of dying apart from the presence of God or anything good. It will be a living hell for all eternity. It's hard to preach that because I don't want anybody to experience that. But the truth is, there are many, according to the Bible, that will. And you and I have got to do all we can while we can to rescue as many as we can in these last days. Now, in Matthew 25 and verse 41, the Bible says this. He said to those, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire perfect, prepared for the devil and his angels. Brother Randy, I preached for on Sunday. He, I remember this while he was here for four and a half years. He, he mentioned this a lot. He always would say hell was not made for man. And that's true. It was not created for you and I. But we have sinned, we have rebelled against the holy God and he's made a way that we can, we don't have to go there. But sadly, many will thumb their nose. Many will shake their fist in the face of God and they'll die and go to a devil's hell. Now, that scene is, is repeated for the church crowd. Matthew chapter number seven said, well, let's, let's just read it. Flip over to Matthew seven real quick. Uh, Matthew chapter number seven says this, and look at verse number 20, 21, somewhere right there. Matthew seven, verse number, uh, wherefore by their fruits, that's verse 20, you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many, how many? Many. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Verse 23. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. They'll stand before God. They've been to church. They've sung. They've preached. They've, according to these verses, they'll say, I've cast out them. I've done all these things. And Jesus will say, I never knew you. You're going 
to an eternal lake of fire. I'm certainly not the kind of preacher to try to make anybody doubt their salvation. But I hear, here's what I will say tonight. I would be sure of my salvation. Amen. I would want to know like Miss Fredley. I would want to know that I know that I know that I know Amen. that I'm going to heaven. I can't know that for you. You can't know that for me. But I can take you to the place. I can take you to the spot where God changed my life. I can't get over that. I can't get past that. Why? Because he changed my life. I was dead and now I'm alive. I was made new, a brand new creature in him. I was changed. Hallelujah. Uh, thanks be to God for what he did for me. <laughs> if you can't go to a place like that, if you don't know a place like that, then I encourage you, I beg you, please be sure that you know that you've been born again. This judgment is final, or is fearful and it's final. The, uh, the Bible says there, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Forever consigned, forever uh, bound to the lake of fire to suffer torment for all eternity. Hell is real and lost people will go to hell. As much as we want to preach and shout about heaven, we better remember hell is real. Amen. Hell is moved beneath us. Hell, the Bible said in, I believe it's Job, hell hath enlarged herself. I personally, now this, this ain't the Bible, this is just my own personal thought, I personally believe when we have earthquakes and all that kind of stuff, I believe that's, that's going on, it's shifting underneath there. Uh, and hell is getting bigger. Sinners will go there forever and ever. Luke chapter 16 tells of that story. Uh, many verses in the Bible, Jesus speaks of that. But here's, here's the last one. Miss Tammy, you've you done a good job up there singing. Come up here and just play, play something for me. Just play something for me. And I appreciate that. I told her I'll, that'll teach you to show up here on Wednesday night. I'll make you work, praise the Lord. <laughs> um, this judgment is final. This judgment is fearful, but this judgment is foolish in that end for this reason. Not one person has to go. Not one person has to be there. Any sinner that will repent today can be saved. There's no sinner that he can't save. I'm glad for the, what the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 7. Wherefore, he is able to save them unto the uttermost that come to God by him. I'm glad no matter how far they've strayed, no matter how far they are off, there's not one that Jesus can't save. I want you to stand with me while she's playing. The blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary is enough to save every sinner. The grace of God that was shown is enough to save every sinner. Paul said that he's come to save sinners of whom am I am chief. If Paul said it, uh, inspired of the Holy Spirit, if he can save the chief, then I promise you he can save everybody underneath him. He can save every one of us. The love of God is sufficient uh, to, uh, to save every uh, child of God, every person uh, that comes to God. Now, you know, somebody open your hymnal and find that, that hymn, this, The Love of God. Find that one for me real quick. And I'll, try to, I'll try to tell you the story of it uh, real quick. Uh, the last verse of The Love of God was found etched in an insane asylum. This guy they had thrown into this asylum, they thought he was crazy. And he ended up dying, I believe is the story. And after he died, they found this poem 
etched into that. What page was that, Eric? 220. If I was any kind of real fundamentalist, I'd have known the, my hymn number, wouldn't I? Praise God. Uh, 220. Listen, listen to this. Could we the ink of oceans fill? And were the skies... Can you play that? Just play that. Play, play, play two swing. Could we with ink... Just play it real slow. I, I ain't about to sing it. But, all right, hallelujah. We don't want that. Go ahead. <laughs> Could we within the ocean feel, and were the skies of parchment made, were every stalk of her on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. Down below there, it said the last stand of this song was pen penciled on the wall of a narrow room of an asylum by a man said to have been demented. The profound lines were discovered after his death. I believe somehow, somewhere, this man got a hold of the truth of God. The Bible said in the last verses there, in the book of John, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written of all that he had done. Tonight, I don't know who it is that's heaviest on your heart. I've got people. I've got people, and i just be honest with you. I've got people that sit under my preaching that sit in these pews that have gone astray according to those verses. They may have done great works. And Jesus may say to them one day, depart from me, I never knew you. My heart's broken for people that are lost and I don't want, Wilbur, I don't want for the echoes of this preacher's voice to be in their mind for eternity, hearing the messages I would have preached to them. I wonder tonight how many of us will come and gather around these altars and we'll come and pray for our loved ones. Here we come. God, that one, those many that are near and dear to us tonight. Oh, we believe in the love of God. We know that God, you're able. God, we know you can. And I'm asking you tonight to save the sinner that's nearest hell to rescue, to redeem, to change, to wash them in your precious blood. Oh God, help us tonight as believers, as the saved of God, the redeemed of God. Lord, may we, as the Bible said, may the redeemed of the Lord say so. God, may we go and tell what you've done for us. Lord, I pray you'd help us to carry this gospel message to a lost and dying world before it's everlasting too late. God, save those Oh, God, we love you. We thank you for saving us. Thank you for washing and redeeming us. We have not done anything to deserve it. But, Lord, we want to tell you thank you for saving wretches like us. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. While these are praying, maybe you're here tonight and say, Preacher, I'm... I need God to help me. 
I need God's help and I need God's touch in my life. Maybe it's for somebody else. Here's my hand. Preacher, would you help me pray? Would you believe God alongside me? Maybe you're here tonight and say, Preacher, God's speaking to me about salvation. I do not know that I'm saved. I do not know without a doubt that I'm saved. Please pray for me. Is there somebody like that? Here's my hand. Slip it up. Put it right back down. 